Uh, yeah, well, well <clears throat> welcome everybody yeah. to episode 172. Yes, 172. Of the China Show. And man, again, we've got quite the show for you today. Uh, we're going to be talking a bit about the floods, but we've got a lot more than that. That's actually not the main focus of the show, but let's, should we saunter right into it? We should. Okay, so we're just going to saunter right into it with what's new, where we tell you what's new with regards to China. And as you know, this whole flood thing has been an absolute disaster. Yes. Okay. But there's a lot we can do to explain why it's been a disaster. Yeah. And one of them is the fact that China is the land of shortcuts and facades. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As we can see here, this is a clip we've shown before. Yeah. We'd like everybody to pay attention for those of you, of you who haven't seen it, okay? What we have here is a, I believe, um, perhaps a, a security guard or somebody attached to real estate who's at the site of a very big new real estate project. Okay, these things pop up everywhere around China. Oh, yeah. See what he finds. What's he showing us here? There's a drainage grate, and of course, underneath it is nothing but ground. And that's because it's fake. Okay, it's just another one of those things. And we see this with a lot of things in China where, you know, you're supposed to have drainage up to spec, or you're supposed to have fire hydrants up to spec, which we've shown as well. Yeah. Or you're supposed to have like the fire hoses in the building all up to spec, but they're just there um, in appearance only. Yeah. They're not connected to anything. Yeah. Okay. And this is a case of that. The drain doesn't go anywhere. There is no drainage. There are no underground drains. It's not the only example, though. Here's a, clearly another one where there's just concrete underneath. And if you hear the people complaining, um, they're complaining that all of them in the area are like that, not just that one. And see, here's another one where it's just fake underneath. So it's no wonder that uh, we have these big issues. Whenever there's any kind of a natural disaster in China, you have these massive issues because of all the shortcuts that have been taken. Mm-hmm. Shortcuts which end up resulting in the loss of life. Yeah. And uh, that's why when you see these big mega projects uh, in China, you end up uh, being impressed and saying like, wow, look at all these huge mega projects. And when they do the Belt and Road stuff, they're building something in Africa. You're like, wow, look at this. But it's all made to look impressive. But if they can't even get the very basics, like the drainage and, and uh, you know, the structure, like the actual, it, when they dig down and they see the pile length and stuff in the structures, they're all wrong. They're all just charbador, so to speak. And uh, it's a massive issue. Yeah. I, uh, I think, you know, you're phrasing it very politely by saying, if they can't get that right, this is done deliberately. True. Nobody's sitting there going, I know. I th- I've heard of a drain, but I just don't know how to make one. They're mm. just they're being lazy. They're cutting corners. They're saving yep. labor costs. They're saving concrete costs. That's why we went walk through these ghost towns. We'll show you a little bit later. But mm-hmm. we'd walk around and see the concrete being mixed with sawdust and styrofoam and things like this. There's things that they do to save on costs. Correct. Um, and it, it is it does boil down to corruption. Yeah, it's absolutely awful. Yeah. Anyway, um, but yeah, that's that's in regards to the flood because people are, were wondering how can the drainage in a modern city be so bad, right? Because we're going to be talking about a city that China, it's so modern, in fact, that China expects it not to really come to fruition until 2035. Yes, this is a so, big part of the show you'll see. Should, should have some good drainage. I'd say so. Right. Um, anyway, we're not going to get too much into the aftermath of the flooding. You've got a video coming out probably tomorrow, tomorrow yeah. where you go in depth about what's actually happened after the flooding in China. And some yeah. of it's scary. It's way, way bigger and deeper and more sinister than I thought. Yeah. Uh, so I had to make a video. I actually kiboshed another topic I was working on just because of how important it was. Yeah. Uh, I ended up getting some info. So watch out for that on Lao 86 tomorrow if you want to know the, the truth of what happened after the flood. Yeah. I'm not talking about the cleanup efforts. I'm talking no, no. about the really bad the stuff The bad they stuff, found. yeah. But what we'd show you is some of the knee-jerk reaction that the Chinese government had to the flooding. Okay. Yeah. So as we all know, uh, when a big disaster like this hits, it's mm-hmm. not the Chinese government's um, priority to actually go and save people. It's their priority to put on a dance dancing show to show everybody, look how great we are and look how we're saving We took care people. of it. Yeah. Um, and what you can see behind us is a great example of this. Why do they need to create this sort of fake human chain of soldiers if they could have just driven that truck closer to where they all are? This is what they do. They, they always do, they do that. They did that during the COVID thing. They had like 500 people lined up right They're next passing. to each other to pass one thing. Yeah, and they could have the just truck, reversed the truck. It was a road. Yeah. The truck could have literally just backed up five, you know, hundred. And then meters. you wouldn't have needed anyone, yeah. one person to offload it. 
But yeah, that's what they do. Um, and we're seeing a lot of this just put on show for the camera stuff. Uh, you know, like for instance, this is just appalling, okay? In any stretch of the imagination, this this scene should not exist. Yeah. So what are we looking at here? This is uh, rescue workers passing their parcels as usual or passing their tools to help Could out. Could be sandbags. Right, or... whatever. But they have a guy spraying a hose to make it look like it's torrential downpour because this is for state media in China. Yeah. It's see the communist flag with the hammer and yeah, sickle. Yeah, let's let's actually go back there. You can see the cameraman, okay, over there. You see the cameraman. He's the one standing uh, all the way over there. You know the guy in the black with the white hat. Yeah. So he's filming them. They're doing this heroic, these heroic acts of you know like oh we're fighting the elements to you know help the flood victims and stuff and stop the floods. <laughs> I, I don't want to give too much away, but I got a report, and yeah. it's so so messed up but yeah. they're actively stopping relief efforts so there were a bunch of people you know china's not a charitable country in fact it's the least charitable country in the world yeah but there are good people of course right? there are good people in china so you want people that there are people that want to help out there were people that were trying to join the relief efforts to do this kind of stuff in real life not this fake facade yeah right? like the ngos right and they were getting stopped and told by the government that they had to make way for these propaganda efforts and they had to sign up and then got all most people got their applications canceled because yeah. they they wanted this they instead. had to be approved yeah. before they could Curated. go in and help yeah so an ngo turns up with all of their their rescue equipment and they're ready to go in and rescue and they're like no you're not allowed to you have to wait until you get official permission yeah and this is what they're doing by the way this happened while the floods were still going on they filmed this mm. okay because this Last week, we did that breaking um, mm -hmm. you know, news to show you guys what was happening. And then this actually, this footage was filmed the next day. That's why we didn't include it last week. So it shows you they pounce immediately on the propaganda. And here we see it again. Um, here's a local villager walks up to say, like, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> I mean, look at the guy filming you know, the tan jacket. See, there's no flood there. This is a very not affected area. What are they doing? They're just, uh, it's a pre manufactured pile of dirt to make them look like they're. You know, saving the saving the flood victims. So, yeah. so you got like an excavator in the back there that obviously piled this dirt yeah. up so that they can sit there because they, they want to curate the image. Yeah, so they can propaganda. pick at this dirt with their shovel. Yeah. Okay. See? This had huge. I don't want to keep shot on my video tomorrow, but this, this, this had huge implications. This is yeah. bad. Yeah. They're just like half assed. They've got the flags up. That's the important thing. I mean, you just can't. Well, you can't make it up. They're making. They're it up. making it up. Look. Oh, look, you see how he's like, let's get that flag waving. Did you see that? Yeah. He's like, oh, look, the flag's looking a little limp. So I think the most important thing for me to do is let's get that flag waving let's for the camera. Let's get the flag while yes. they make the sand. See the guy there in the background is like filming it. So yeah. they're like, let's get the flag up there and make sure, you know, it looks like we're really doing a good job here. Do it again. Make yeah. the sandbag again. That will probably yeah. not even end up in. <laughs> Dude, if you look at what they're doing, they're not actually doing They've created a tiny little line of sandbags. Yes. It's probably like, I don't know, 10 meters long or something. Yeah. And that's all they need for the footage. Yeah. Like, yay, let's get this. Uh, yeah. This propaganda done. <laughs> See, look, they're like, put that flag there. Now, look, let's reposition the flag. <laughs> the <life vest>. Yeah. <laughs> the life vest. Yeah. <laughs> look, there's no. <laughs> why are they wearing life vests? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, why are they? Here's another clip where the villagers are actually busy, like, they're people actually doing their work. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Now they're like kind of bewildered. Why is the PLA running up and down here? Look at the look at these guys' faces. They're like, what the hell is even going on? They're actually on here? doing relief efforts. Yeah. Yeah. And again, oh, let's film ourselves delivering goods as volunteers. Again, it's all about the facade. It's all about this dog and pony show. It is. You know what I mean? Dog face pony soldiers. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I know, right? Exactly. Anyway, guys, um, the stupid propaganda side. We're going to talk now about more stupid propaganda. <laughs> okay. okay, so not a side. Yeah. Now, there's quite a few things to unpack here. First mm -hmm. thing I would like to take a look at, this is the People's Daily, okay, massive. This is China's big outlet, you know, news outlet. It did a hit piece on me the other day. 
Yeah, did, they did. Yeah, yeah. they did. We'll cover that in some point. Yeah. Now, there's a couple of things I'd like you to pay attention to. What they're doing here is they're promoting this uh, massive railway station. It's called the Xiong'an Railway Station. Yeah, this is their future city. So if you see in the propaganda, you see it all over the place. Like China's going towards the future. This is the future city that will be done in 2035. Yeah. It's called Xiong'an. It's Xi Jinping's darling. Yes. It's his vision. I, can I catch everyone up? Yes, please do. Every Chinese leader under communist leadership, so since Chairman Mao, um, has to have something they're known for. Mm. And... Xi Jinping is just simply not known for anything other than driving the economy into the ground. <laughs> yes, and, and even zero COVID. And even Chinese people know that. Zero COVID is supposed to be a success, and that was going to be his namesake. Yes. But that failed, right? Yeah. That he That's a pockmark on his legacy. Mm -hmm. So this is his new thing. It's his darling child, is Xiong An. Now yes. he's going to grasp onto this. Yes, exactly. So there are a few things that I would like everybody to pay attention to. If you look in that um, this drone shot, look in the distance. See the green ground. Yeah. Okay, it's supposed to be grass. Well, it's supposed to look like grass. Yeah. You're going to see that green ground a little later, okay? It's important because People's Daily puts out this... I'll just play it in the background. It's this glowing thing about this amazing new railway station. By the way, this is Asia's largest railway station. It is, yeah. In the whole of Asia. I don't think it looks very good. No, it doesn't at all. Um, it's got, like, solar panels on the roof, and it's all high-tech, and it's massive, it and it's supposed to be, like I said, not supposed to be. It is <clears throat> Asia's largest railway station, yeah. okay? Yeah. So... They're making a huge thing out of this. Okay, that was a People's Daily. And here's CGTN. Xi Jinping's going there to check it out, right? Oh, he's got to point at stuff. North visit. Korea style, walking around with a yeah. jacket, pointing at things. Putting exactly. Putting hand behind the back. Mm -hmm. so Tell me this isn't North Korea. Yeah, pretty much. Anyway, let's let's take a look what you get to see when you go there. The Xiong'an new area. His first stop is Xiong'an Station. Okay, there's Xiong'an Station. Oh, another thing I'd like everybody to pay attention to. Do the you blue see? Filter. Look at the blue filter. Yeah, the blue filter. <laughs> do you do you see any rivers or lakes nearby? I do not. No, that there's is not, not a, a single body of water within any shot, and you'll see later as well. Here it is. The Xiong'an Station is the first major infrastructure project in the Xiong'an New Era. Now, every day, 17 inner city trains travel between Beijing and Xiong'an. Okay. You, you didn't cut this in. No, this is what CGTN put. They're showing the board of like all the trains. And this is what you don't see. When people keep saying like, look at these new infrastructure projects. It's amazing. China's 3,000 years ahead. This is the timetable. Yeah, they don't show you what you have to be subjected to if you go and visit these things. Okay, it's literally communist propaganda. Look at yeah. what's on the screen. They're making all the ancient dude, the delivery driver, everyone studying this Studying communist communism. Book. It's the socialism and Chinese characteristics book. Yes. I mean, that's just appalling to me. Imagine you're like waiting for your train and this, this is what you have to watch. This poor delivery guy in his spare time has to study like uh, socialism with Chinese characteristics. This party member or whatever has got it on his desk this is this is china's changed man mm. like, i actually heard a good joke this is very relevant okay uh from a chinese person the other day they said mm -hmm. uh, they were looking uh china was pushing north korean videos of kim jong-un being all like cool right yeah. and uh the top commenter uh was being facetious in chinese and they said the funny thing about North Korea is it's both our past and our future. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Talking I, about China. It's very relevant. It is. I mean, look how many hammers and sickles are in this one shot. He's got a flag on his desk. It's oh, on the book and it's on his, his little pen. lapel pin because yeah. he's a Communist Party member. Yeah. You know, and then there's just this massive hammer and sickle in the mountain. Yes. Anyway, so that's... Hey, this is relevant, yeah, I promise. Yeah, this is what you get to see when you go to Xiong'an area. But now, they wanted to push this Xiong'an uh, station so much... That they bought in the Shill Brigade. Ah, the Shill Brigade. So you mean the foreigners that are paid to go promote the Chinese propaganda? Yes. Okay. So when I say foreigners, I mean like people from America, yeah, people Canada, that are not, UK. not Chinese. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, like again, the whole talking point of the Xiong'anu area. Listen to this this guy over here. He says. President Xi also underlined that we should build Zangang District into a high-end and high-tech industry cluster. This so, is so North Korea. it's just Xi Jinping underlined. Xi Jinping, yeah. Xi Jinping said that. Xi Jinping looked at this tile. We're going to erect a, you know, a shrine. That's it's just ridiculous. Anyway, yes. this is Xi Jinping's darling. So they bought in the shills, right? Um, and I'm sure people who are familiar with our channel know about some of these foreign shills. But so you guys work for the, the Chinese yeah, government. Yeah, the people that work for Chinese uh, state media, or you know, they get paid and flown or flown around to go yeah. to these places, and they make videos basically doing propaganda for China. 
Okay, so let's let's take Stringers, a look. Stringers, as uh, they call them. Yeah, exactly. What did they have to say? Let's take a look. Now, this this is important. One of the guys, um, you know, who's featured in this video. Um, is pretty good at taking drone footage, and he filmed this thing from the air. And now I would like you to pay attention to first. First, first off, um, what would you say about this picture? What stands out? That is some terrible pollution. Yeah, I'd say wow. so. Wow! I thought this is supposed to be the future mega project city of 2035. I thought there, China was the at the forefront of green technology. Yeah. Certainly, don't see any green there. Well, I do see some. Some green that probably isn't real. Mm. But anyway, look at that sky. Look at that skyline. I mean, it's, that's smog level. That's appalling. That's a sunny day, by the way. That's not a, that's not yeah, a cloudy that's, day. Yeah, that's appalling. Okay, but remember in the first clip I showed you that um, what's supposed to be grass? Yeah. Well, unwittingly, our propagandists over here have shown us that that is fake grass. Ooh. Look at that green stuff. It's just like sheets. You know, it's like uh, it's like ground turf. sheets. It's, it's not turf. even it's not even turf, dude. It's just a sheet. Oh, it's like that stuff they drape over stuff. Yeah, because look how it's yeah. you see how it's broken there. It's like rolled up or yes. blown away from the wind or whatever. But look how awful it looks. And that's again the land of shortcuts and facades. Hunter Green had a good point. Um, What's that? He said it's N sixty four fog. <laughs> it is N sixty four fog. <laughs> anyway, so um. Let us uh, let, let's see what they had to say about this because this is where it gets interesting. I'll get us out of here for a second. Um, you know, beautiful. Hey, check this out. So you've seen the drone footage that I shot. Look at this map. Oh my God! Look at all these buildings. This is going to look so amazing when it's finished. Holy moly. But so when I hear about the whole, you know, Chinese can't build anything, that all the stuff is going to fall apart. It's, it's, you know. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. I hate um, that whole like, I'm, I'll film you and you film me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, dude. I mean, it's cringe. It's, ah. It is whatever it is. Yeah. But this anyway. is that railway station, okay? Yeah, and you, it's, you facetiously cut it into that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Because of it's course. underwater. Yeah, it's yeah. underwater. Um, so that entire railway station, as we saw, there were no lakes nearby. There were no rivers in any no. of the drain, uh, drone footage. Yeah. It's flooded. Yeah. This thing cost... The, the biggest railway station The in largest Asia. railway station cost in billions. Asia. Cost, no, it cost like something like $80 billion or $50 yeah. billion, dollars, whatever. It cost A lot of billions. Obscene amounts of yeah. money to build, right? And again, this shows that these mega projects are useless if you can't even have basic drainage. No, I mean, you fake the drains in the ground. What do you think is going to happen? Yeah, so the entire surrounding area is There's a lake. There's a lake, lake. nearby now. <laughs> it is a lake. From Tomato Team said that. Yeah, 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 nice. But if you take a look at that footage, you can actually see the tops of trees. Okay, let me just... I would call that a great lake at this point. That is massive. Yeah, it's, it's huge. You know... <laughs> I'm sorry. But anyway, Stop. take a look um, at the tops of the trees there. Those are tall trees. This, and now is, any... this is called Lake Xi. <laughs> Lake Xi, nice. Um, you can also see in the footage telephone poles, uh, you know, or power line poles. That's, over that's there. what gave perspective to me. Yeah. When I saw those, I was like, holy mother of pearl, that is bad. Yeah. <sighs> So the entire area, I, the amount of damage that must have been done, because you saw from the drone footage, that building is not spared. No. It's got underground levels, by the way. Yeah. A whole bunch of underground yeah. levels. Now they're underwater levels. Yeah. That whole thing must, it's going to cost billions to fix. It's not just water damage either. Think about the pressure on all the windows and the, oh, the so electronics yeah. everything, and escalators. Everything, everything must be destroyed. Yeah. It needs to be rebuilt. Yeah, it needs. It's going to need billions mm. to rebuild. Yeah, um, a lot of that. So, but nobody's. There's no footage coming out of this. This, this is, is like the only shot we could find. It's like a hidden secret. I dre I dredged the mm. Chinese internet for this, and all I could find is updated articles of the like how like how amazing it is footage mm. from a couple years ago. Yeah, it's pretty wild. They're trying to bury this. Now, this here's a very important mm. thing. This whole Xiong'an. <gasps> New area because it's Xi Jinping's darling. Yeah, is the reason why they flooded 
all these other surrounding rural areas was to save this place. Yeah, actually, that, that'll be in my video tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. There was a huge, huge uproar about it. Yeah, you covered yeah, it. Yeah, it's it's, bad. it's insane. But we just wanted to break it here and let you guys know that this massive, these massive mega projects that China puts on. I mean, of course, you can't, you can never account for natural disasters, mm. and even the best built things going to take a beating. Um, but because of the hard and fast way that China plays with the rules and the shortcuts that are taken, this kind of thing is inevitable. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they can bluster as much as they want about it, but at the end of the day, this is kind of the result that you see. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So that is, that is, yeah, that. Now, <laughs> as if China isn't dealing with enough, we've been here. Yeah. Hulomber. Yeah. Genhe. Genhe. Genhe, Chabado. It's like. Nemungu Genhe. We went here. Yeah, this is where we met the reindeer people. Yeah, they're great. And no one gave a shit about that, by the way. Yeah, it sucks because that was awesome. We had, Those like, people were so cool. We um, did a whole like uncut thing on ADV China about when we met the reindeer people and all that, remember? Yeah, they're awesome. And nobody watched it. They're like, mm. reindeer people? Get lost. I don't care. What is yeah, this? Yeah, people that raise reindeer in the middle of the forest in yeah. China. It's kind of rare for China. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, uh, right now, as you can see, the 6th, so that's like, what, two days ago? Three days ago, four days, yeah. whatever it is, a couple days ago. Yeah. My math is Days off. ago. <laughs> yeah, days ago, four, five days ago, right? It was last year. Yeah, it was like, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, battling forest fires. Yeah. I, I got to tell you, though, I find it really weird that they're using leaf blowers to combat the fire. It's Obviously, just, it's a thing. I though, mean, it must be. It's, just, it's probably out. the first time I've seen that, though. But anyway. Yeah, maybe it's like CO2 or something. I think it's, no. it's to redirect the fire. Yeah, I think it's to, to stop area. it from spreading towards you. Yeah. So you, like, blow it. I'm maybe, assuming. Maybe. Yeah. Let's fan the flames. Uh, yeah. Some firefighter it's out there will be like, thing. this is correct. Yeah, it's obviously course. correct. They wouldn't do that no, otherwise. But just to me, it's like, what are you doing? Gardening, you know? Yeah. Anyway. Um, so yeah, what else is new? Yikes. Yeah. No injuries. No injuries. Yeah, don't worry. There are no you injuries. Stop it. Yeah. We've warned people multiple times about going to amusement parks in China. Oh, yikes, dude. We've got a whole thing about that on Shaban Ho, by Yeah, the way. definitely. Check out our Monday show if you ever yeah. want to see that episode. It's a good one. Yeah. Uh, this is one of those ball things that they attach like bungee cords to and mm -hmm. they shoot it up into the sky. That's not what you want to happen when you're in one of those ball things. But don't worry, the people survived. You can see them walking out at the end here. So you see it actually came loose. One of the, the cables came loose on the side. And uh, here are the people being lowered down. And they're obviously not happy, but they walk away just fine afterwards. Yeah, you but know, think about what would have happened. A little if, shaken. Yeah. yeah, what if the other one gave away? Yeah. I mean, the, the, the one that we did, the one that we covered, mm -hmm. let's just say... It, the outcomes were a lot worse. Than yeah, this. exactly. Anyway, you see the people walking away just fine there. But that's not the only uh, amusement park disaster. This was also, uh, this was the 10th, so this is yesterday. Yeah. Okay. And um, that thing broke down, which forced these ladies to crawl on the elevated tracks. And then the thing started moving. Don't worry, they, they weren't too badly hurt. Whoa, um. <laughs> what happened here? This is currently what is going around the Chinese internet, the biggest meme. Yeah. Um, this boy... Very serious. Very, 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 very serious, very serious in his military training. Yes. Um, he wants to look very driven. Yeah, fierce. Respectful. Fierce. 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 Yeah. And this is actually something you, you see during the military parades. Yeah. If you if you watch when they have those big, uh, you know, they bring out all the military and Xi Jinping's in his stupid limo going like, Tong Jumin Hao, you know, mm -hmm. that thing. Watch Tong the Jumin Sing Kula. Yeah. I don't think he even raises his hand. It's oh, yeah, too much sorry. effort. That, he's just he just stands there. But um, if you look at the the soldiers, they all try to like wide eye. Like if you notice that they're like mm, straining to get their eyes open as much as possible. It's part of their training. It must be so uncomfortable. I yeah. can't even do that for like a Holy minute. Holy crap! Yeah, I get sore. These guys, they're, they're very well trained. Anyway, he's doing that right now. I am awake. <laughs> yeah. <yes. laughs> Anyway, maybe he uh, taught himself to sleep with his eyes open. <laughs> it's like it's creepy. But look, even the instructor who's about to give him an award is cracking up laughing at this guy. She can't handle it. <laughs> he smiled too yeah. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But this went around the Chinese internet. It's very, very popular. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's just like a fierce dude. He's a fierce boy. Yeah. Uh, another Explain. thing robots. Hmm. Uh, a lot of propaganda going around about how China has embraced 5G AI robots. Yes. Which yes. we have a soundbite related to that. Oh, we do, actually. Uh, 
it's part of China's Tell a Good China Story campaign. It's、mm-hmm. to make China look good to the rest of the world. And they think that, like, you know, maybe rightfully so in some ways that people care about this AI, 5G, all this new tech stuff. Sure. So if they look like they're at the forefront of it, then people will invest in their country. Yeah. Right. Unfortunately, a lot of this stuff just has mishaps, right? Like,、yeah. there's a fleet of these delivery robots in this one city here that just can't seem to figure things out. Yeah. Because of their self driving capabilities, they get stuck on each other because they break. They automatically break. Yeah. So they get in this like death spiral <laughs> of not being able to move. Yeah. So、It's, they're saying like robot gangs are taking over the streets、yeah. of China, basically. It's actually just defective I mean, AI. The, let, let's just, just get this out of the way. Like, That's not these, AI. What am I even saying? The, these delivery things are they're here in the States as well.、Yeah. I mean, you、yeah. see people vandalizing them、yeah. all the time. You see、yeah. all those videos of people like kicking them over、yeah. and they're around. They're、It's、around. Like, yeah. Um, the, Don't let the robots yeah, take over. <laughs> yeah, I watched one where a guy, like,、uh, he, he was like obviously high on something and、uh-huh. he thought it was literally the robots taking over and he attacked one. Nice. Yeah, anyway, yeah. these things are not AI. They're basically,、uh, they can travel around autonomously because they got avoidance sensors and you can program where they go. That's how it works. You make a food delivery、yeah. and then an address gets put in. It can find its、track. way there, but it's finding its way there because. It's basically following like a GPS, and if something moves in front of it, it stops. It's not AI. It's not intelligent. It's not sitting there thinking about the meaning of life or something. No, and that's、like that. that's again me falling for Chinese propaganda. Remember、yeah. when they they had like a you know one of those buses?、Mm. It was literally a bus.、And、they said it was a road tra- a and train. And they said it was a a road train. No, no, a trackless a train. trackless train. Trackless and, train. And the top comment was like, "Mofo, that's a bus." <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anyway, so these things are causing some trouble. Apparently, all getting、yeah. stuck and you know because they get in this death spiral,、yeah. not be able to move. Yeah, it's、right? kind of funny. They cause traffic jams and whatnot.、Yeah. And yeah, we thought we'd point this out again since we're talking about the shortcuts and the facades, the fake drains and whatnot. Here you have in China, and I remember this. I made a video all about this、yeah. years ago. But, Something that shocked us. Yeah, China at some point decided, okay, we're going to prove that we're like green and. This know, is like, all part of that. Yeah, exactly. This is all part of that. Yeah, exactly. And what we're going to do is make sure that we have recycle bins and normal trash bins and stuff, just to prove that we're the same as Japan and the West, and we're right up there. We know what we're doing. Also, to bump up the figures of green renewables and yeah, stuff. Yeah, because they can say, look. We installed a hundred thousand trash, like renewable, like recyclable trash cans. Millions, Mil- yeah, millions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> billions, whatever. But they can say that, and then it goes into a stat somewhere, and someone、yeah. reads, "Oh, look, China's ahead of the game." And this will go into a foreign study, like、yeah. in America or something. Yeah, some like, like、oh, wow. Harvard study will、yeah. be like, China has the most recycle bins、yeah. in the whole world, or whatever. Therefore,、yeah. they are the world leader at recycling. It'll probably it'll won't、like、be、that. Harvard, but it'll definitely be you know a think tank、yeah. that will get picked up by media, and then like a. A、professor at Harvard will take that and then yeah, make something out of it and tell、yeah. all his students, "Look at China; they're ahead、yeah. of the world." Yes. Anyway, so this is how it's achieved. You can see it's got cans, others, paper, others, plastic, papers, and it、yeah. looks pretty progressive, right? It does. I mean, yeah. We and、go. we saw this firsthand multiple times. Oh yeah, I've got footage of that. I filmed myself. And this is actually what、can、happened it- in China. That's what that's what ended up happening. Yeah, you know, and it's still like that. Now, before we continue with our show, guys, we'd like to remind you about our Monday show. This is、uh, something that you missed out on. Please take a look. P- Panary Boy, of course. Panary Boy. <laughs> oh, the fair rabbit child, Piano Boy. <laughs> Crocodile. <laughs> Crocodile. <laughs> okay. New Bailun era. New Bunrin. YG. New Bailun. New Bailun Lup. New Bailun Lup. If you buy one pair, you get three pairs for free. So, <laughs> it can't be very good. <laughs> you mean aglo devicey? Aglois, aglois. Says this is the blessing from gods. <laughs> this is the blessing from gods. You cannot、yeah. get alcohol at Taco Bell. People、Oops. are getting blown、Sorry. away by Taco Bell being on a plate. Changing a <laughs> bunch of keys in this thing and go. Skip the Taco Bell. You know what I mean? I skipped the Taco Bell part because I thought we'd explain it. Okay, I'll get back to it. Yeah,、um, you know, you might think that that episode was all about fake stuff, but it wasn't. We're、that、actually was just a funny intro. Yeah,、uh, we talked about brands that are massively 
reg- regarded as really high end in China, but are just not high end or elsewhere. Just normal elsewhere, yeah. yeah. So we talked about things like Taco Bell is a great example of a of a restaurant that's very high end. It's very exotic. It's like you get alcohol. There's a full bar there. Yeah, yeah, know? exactly. It's like it's totally different. Mm. So we talked about brands that are like wildly that you would be a super swag if you had these brands. Yeah, whether it be clothing or restaurants or whatever, you'd be super swag if you have these in China. But in the rest of the world, people would be like, what? You yeah, know? exactly. And so that was a really fun episode. And you can go see that. Are you doubling up? Yeah. You can go see that on uh, patreon.com slash ADV podcast. Oh, yeah. yeah. What we have is a full-on Monday show there called Xiaoban Ho. It's basically all the stuff we can't cover on this YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. And it's there every single Monday live. And then if you don't make it live, it's still up there. So you can see the entire back catalog. Not only is it the best way to support us, but you're going to get 50 plus episodes of amazing content. It's yeah. the real saucy stuff. Yeah, you can go back and you know watch them all. Yeah, it's, it's anyway, really good. Anyway, guys, it's time for us to move on to our next um, part of the show, which is soft power. It's our main part of the show. This is where we yes. talk about how China's trying to change your mind through soft power, through propaganda, and all that other nonsense. Hey, bye. Talk uh, about being on a... Sorry. What do we have in store now? Well, it's something that you're going to explain to everybody. Yeah, so there's a, a few different topics that have been coming up that are really hurting the investment to China. Now, yeah. the the thing you have to understand is that China has always really relied on foreign investment to make their economy work. That's how China grew. Yeah. It didn't grow by itself. It no. wasn't like all of a sudden, let's just make money. No. They allowed foreign investment in, special economic zones like Shenzhen, et cetera, where they just opened it up for foreign investment. Yep. Foreign companies came in, could take advantage of the cheap labor and build factories and so on. Without foreign investment, China would still be the same as it was back in the 70s and 80s where they were just starving, basically, for lack of a better word. Yeah, the thing is, like, uh, under the leadership of Deng Xiaoping and then you had uh, Hu Jintao, yeah. you had and Jiang Zemin were very pro-foreign investment because it was mm-hmm. making China come into the modern era. Yeah. The thing is... With Xi Jinping, when he consolidated all of his power, the current dictator of China, what happened was he's always been anti-America, right? He's always been very anti-integration. He's very pro, like, we are the best because we are the best, right? Yeah, cut everyone else off, you know? Yes, cut everyone off. Very, very, um, what's it called? Very ethnocentric. Yes, that's um, the word. Han chauvinist, like Mm -hmm. Han Chinese people are superior. Like, Mm -hmm. it's really pushed this really nasty, almost fascist way of nationalism in China. Yeah. And when you do that, you obviously have a propaganda machine that pushes this narrative to the people, right? Yes. Now, amongst this, people start to believe it, and the leadership even starts to believe it. It becomes a cycle. It becomes this kind of self-defeating machine, Mm -hmm. right? In this process, you end up in a situation where you drive investment out. You drive companies to leave. You drive companies to try to find supply chains elsewhere because China doesn't look like a palatable place to want to set up a shop. Yeah. When you have the government saying, we have to own 51% of your company. We have to have a party office to watch everything you're doing. We have to have access to all of your data. We don't like the fact that you are a competitor to a Chinese company, so we'll kick you out. Yeah. Then people go, wait a minute, I'm not going to do business here anymore. Yeah, why do business in that hostile environment? Why, why do it? Yeah. This self-defeating po- property also, or this self-defeating machine also mm. kind of creates a system where people think, well, we didn't need that anyway. We didn't yeah. need the foreign investment because we did this ourselves. Yeah. Our China is so strong that we made it. Right? Yeah. So what happened is more and more regulations come out that keep driving these investors away. And one of the new ones is the uh, bankers, people involved in the banking sector. Sure. Uh, a sector that desperately needs help in China to revive yes, the economy. Yes, it's in a bad, bad way right now. It's bad, right? Mm. They are now forcing the people in the banking sector to study Xi Jinping thought instead of finding creative solutions to resurrect this dying economy. And, I, and I'm not overstating it. China's economy is in a very bad state. Yes. When you do this, you create this vicious, vicious propaganda circle that doesn't offer any solutions to the problems at hand. Xi Jinping's not an economist. No, that's the whole point. How dare they mandate that people have to study his thought to somehow fix the economy? Yes. He doesn't know. He really doesn't know. No. He probably only knows what's for lunch and dinner, which is pork, by the way. (laughs) Every time. Yeah. 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 But seriously, <laughs> like he doesn't know. Yeah, what the hell? Like, okay, our banking sector is failing. I know what we're going to do. The economy is going down the toilet. We will mandate that everybody has to study Xi Jinping thought and study his books because that's going to fix it. So people in the banking sector are now saying, by mm-hmm. the way, 
that they have to study or read four books of Xi Jinping per month. Four books. And then write reports on it, right? And this is a uh, uh, part of this cog is called uh, shuishi.cn. This is a website we pulled up. Tianguo. Isn't it's it? like study to make China strong is what and this is. And here's the thing, I, and this might not mean a lot to a lot of people, but the character for Xi Jinping and Shui Xi means study, right? And the second character, the Xi, yeah. is the same as like Xi Jinping. So now they say Shui Xi, but it doesn't mean study. It's like study Xi Jinping. Yes, it's so a it's play this of words. wordplay thing. And they've got this ridiculous thing where, yeah, I mean, just look at this crap. Yeah, you recorded this, right? Yeah. So this is the Shui Xi.cn, and you go there and you can download the, the whatever the app. app and all that nonsense. The study Xi Jinping. You're thought. studying this man. Yeah, I mean, this is straight up North Korea. Yeah. I pause it there while I talk about this. Yeah, I, I like this. The, above the naval pants, Xi Jinping over there. What yeah. are you going to study this man? Do you want to look like him? They all do. Look. Yeah. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> so this is, a, this is a, a, I believe a professor said, um, every hour workers spend doing something else is an hour that they aren't doing their jobs. And that was from Victor Xi. Mm -hmm. um, if you think about it, China's economy right now is falling down, rolling down a hill, really. Mm -hmm. The last thing you want people to do is sit there reading stuff that's not relevant and then testing them on that. So they have to like sit down and have a test. Yes. And, like, do they have to like write essays about yes, it? Yes, they have to write essays and then penalize and remove them and fine them for not doing that, but it has nothing to do with their banking performance. And I think right. this is something people don't understand about Chinese companies, is the fining mm -hmm. thing. Yes. Because this used to happen in the companies I used to work in as well. Like, for instance, when I worked for the rapist in the rapist school, right. if somebody was like a minute late, they would fine them. Mm -hmm. And by fine, I mean they deducted money from their salary. Yeah. And it's very, the salaries are not big. Okay? Oh, they're bad in so, China. I think uh, the salary for the like the receptionist there was something like three thousand eight hundred RMB a month. Okay, yeah. five hundred bucks a month. Yeah, <clears throat> and the fine for being late a minute was two hundred and fifty RMB. Whoa! So if and they used to have like a sheet where like there'd be a like a basically a narc who sits there wow. and like someone comes a minute That's late, they'd be like write down their name and wow. the time and all that, and then at the end of the month that person loses money. Like if they didn't bow or something, or they didn't do something, if they wore their shirt a little wrong or they didn't have a, their pin on, because we used to have to wear these lapel pins there, right, which is stupid. Um, if you didn't have the lapel pin on or it was skew or something, there's another fine. So if you don't watch yourself, you could actually have no salary or yeah. even negative salary. Yeah. And so, like, that, that's what you're talking about here. Yeah. If they don't answer the questions right or write a good essay about Xi Jinping's thought, they're going to get their salary docked. Yeah, here's another quote. Even if time spent studying Xi Jinping thought is unlikely to appear in any formal economic models, it's symptomatic of the government's elevation of politics above everything else. Yeah. And that's really what this is. It's watching the economy go downhill, say, why is this happening? Driving foreign investment out and then punishing people, making them study a dictator's thought that has no idea about the economy. Yeah. It's so self-defeating. That's dumb. Uh, a Beijing-based state energy company said employees said that they're increasingly being dragged into impromptu training during working hours. Such sessions often centered around Xi's latest remarks, so it's like what he said last week. Okay. Were held at an isolated facility where mobile phones were confiscated, making it hard for workers to reach out to them just in, ca in case of work-related emergencies. Uh, according to these employees who asked not to be identified as a matter is private, some bank executives and business heads have to take around a third of their working time. This is the important figure here. Yeah. Studying Xi Jinping thought. A third of their working time. So dumb. That's productivity, right? Yeah. Which is already low in China. Yeah. Joining activities and courses or reading four books from Xi every month. Attendance is mandatory this year. So this is the first time that's become mandatory. Okay, yeah. And they also need to submit papers on what they've learned. Mm. At the same time, bankers have seen steep cuts in salaries and the rollback of many perks, such as business travel, all, uh, travel. all to uh, comport with a key tenet of Xi Jinping thought, common prosperity. And common prosperity is uh, kind of Xi Jinping's namesake. Yeah. It's the idea that no, there's no such thing as the American dream. They ridicule the American dream that you yeah. can become something better than what you can imagine. Yes. Common prosperity means that you won't go high, but, you but won't everyone go low. will you'll be just, fine. Everyone will be just like, okay. Okay. Yeah, you'll you'll have, That's the you'll have food on the table. It might not be nice food, but you'll have food. 
It's called the Zhongguo Meng. Zhongguo yeah. Meng means that Chinese you, dream. Yeah, yeah, it means that you never achieve excellence, but you'll be okay. Yeah, that's that's the Zhongguo Meng. What a dream <laughs> to be mediocre. Let's aspire. That's that's it. why China is the leader in innovation, right? As they yeah. say. Yeah, it's bullshit. It's it is absolute nonsense. Anyway. Um, yeah. Moving on, I just wanted to show you can skip past that. We don't need I don't know. I think everybody junk, just junk. needs to see how ridiculous this is. There's like hammers and sickles everywhere. It's like Xi Jinping this, Xi Jinping that, Xi Jinping everything. I like how the QR code to download the Xi Jinping app follows you everywhere. Yeah. It's I like, mean, stay here. <laughs> so is this not having an effect on, um, you know, foreign companies that are... Oh, massively. You know, Massively. You like think this is palatable people? to people that want to go bring investment? The only people pushing for investment into China are bad people. Yes. If you see people that are trying to get you to invest in China, it's because they don't want to lose what they put into it. Yeah, it's because they've got too many too many things going, you know, yes. at the time. Look at those stupid books of Xi Jinping down there. They look so lame. It's ridiculous. Yeah. You anyway. know, I'm I'm against book burning, you know, but not in this case. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, I think it's just, how about, yeah, maybe don't burn them, just drown them. Drown the books in the yeah. flood. Um, the next part of this, yeah, and, the, and you know, why the the economy is doing poorly, or, or we, should, we could say a symptom of this, is to understand the difference between inflation and deflation. Because currently, it's looking like China's about to head towards deflation. They already have experienced deflation now yes. for at least a month. Uh, yes. Um, we're still waiting for more statistics. I should say acknowledged deflation. They acknowledged <laughs> Now, here's the thing. China, when they had a, a really big scramble at the last second to go out there, and there's a quote. You're not, by the uh, way, from, you're, you're not even allowed to say deflation. That's what I'm saying. Okay. From Fu Linghui, which is the National Bureau of Statistics. Okay. Right? So they work for the, uh, the CCP, right? They said... There is no deflation in Chinese society, and there won't be in the future. And when that statement was made, that becomes canon. That's doctrine. That yes. means you can't see, like, it, it, it will be illegal to say that there's deflation in China. Yeah, so you just can't say there's deflation. No. That means so there definitely exist. is. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Now, to understand this, you have to understand what inflation is, because I saw a very, I want to headline this with a hilarious quote Okay. Uh, from some freaking douche on, I think it was Instagram or something. Yeah. But they, uh, they said... Look at the, the Biden administration bringing us into inflation while China's already figured out how to de use deflation. <laughs> and everyone's like, bro. Look, I, I mean, neither of us are economists, but we no. both know that that's some BS right there. Deflation is oh. very, very bad. Yeah. It is quite possibly the worst. If you were to study basic economics, it's the worst thing that can happen to an economy if it's for the negative reasons. Yeah. Now, inflation, right? Prices rising up. The cons, the cons that you keep hearing, the bad things about inflation is that stuff is more expensive. Yeah, stuff costs more. Right? But there's a reason. There's a reason that stuff costs more. It's because there's a higher demand for stuff. Yes. People have higher paychecks. They want to buy more things. Yeah. Inflation needs to be cooled when it gets too hot. Yeah. But inflation, to a certain degree, is a good thing. Well, it, it just shows, shows a it's a healthy economy. Yeah. yeah. Everybody wants to go buy a car. There aren't enough cars to go around. You know, that yes. means everyone's got money. And it also helps economies grow, yeah. right? If you have a, a situation where people want to spend a lot of money because they're flush, even if thing is driving up costs, it means the economy is going to grow. Sure. Right? Deflation is the, it's not, not only the opposite, but it's scary because it's when okay. it's gotten to the point of no return. Mm. Deflation is when there's less money supply, government spending, right? Yeah. There's consumer demand and business investment all tanking. Yeah. All four of those things just start heading down the hill, rolling down the hill. Yeah. And it, it affects prices. It makes prices lower. And people would say from the outside, maybe that you know don't understand, they'll say, oh, well, a cheaper good is a good thing for people. No, it's not. People, deflation means people don't want to spend their money because yeah. they have no hope for the future. Well, you could simplify it and just say if you're a shop owner and you've got bread and yeah. you're trying to sell it for like a dollar, nobody's buying it because no one has that money. Yes. The only way you can, the only thing you could do is cut your prices. So you sell it for 50 cents. Yes. People start buying it, but then you don't have enough profit to pay your staff. You yeah. know, everything runs down. You can't pay your rent. So it's actually negative for That's everybody. called producer price decline. Yeah. Producer price decline is not what you want to see. You don't want to see people having to adjust their prices down mm. to get people to buy their product because then the profit margins aren't there. It's it's really kind of just picture a, a toilet when you yeah, flush yeah, a toilet. Downward spiral. It's going like this. And actually, there's a good graph. I know these are kind of uh, ghetto images, but I thought they were easier to explain than just yeah, writing text on the screen. What's this clip art nonsense? 
Uh, the next one here is what what's going to explain. Oh, the next yeah. one. Okay, so not not the sad face. Deflation ends up leading to a period of de- de- declining prices and goods, yeah. right? Man, but you love these spiral things. I saw this last week too. This is important, though. Yeah. If you can picture this, you'll understand deflation. Right. Get us out of there. Okay. There's no reason. You don't want to be part of this like I def- don't. De- deflationary spiral. So you imagine this. Let's okay. use an example. As you said, bread, right? Imagine okay. there's falling demand for bread. Mm-hmm. People don't want to buy bread anymore. Right. Yep. Actually, let's use something that's that's uh, actually being hurt right now. Automobile price. Okay. Sales, sure, sure. Right. Cars. Right. I'm not going to go buy a car. Are you going to go buy a car if you're thinking that the future economy in the next five years is probably not going to do very well? No. no. I mean, like, it's the thing is, it's you don't know if you're going to have a job. You purchase. don't know if you're going to have the money. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't go buy a house. No. If I was in China right now and I see all these problems with the real estate market, I see the fact that we were locked away for three years because yep. of COVID. Yeah. And my future's just not all there. I'm not yep. going to really want to put that much money down because no. I don't know if I'm going to have a job to pay for it. Correct. Right? Correct. So that yeah. means you got a falling demand. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So the next step in that is you're going to have falling prices. Like you said, you're going to try to make that good more appealing to the customer mm. because they're not buying it anymore. But yeah. if it's cheap enough, if you have a car and you slash it in half and you're like, well, I know the economy's not doing well, but, but I can afford yeah. half the price. Yeah. yeah right? Yeah. Next, what do you have? You have debt defaults. Yeah. Banks are loaning people money to yeah. buy houses and things like this, right? You got, you're not going to be able, if no one can pay it back, what do you think is yeah. going to happen? De- defaults. Then you have bankruptcies. You have people and businesses declaring bankruptcy left and right in China, yeah. right? Then you have layoffs and wage reductions. So people aren't going to be able to afford to keep their staff up. They're not going to increase their scale. They're not sure. going to increase with the, the economy. They're going to contract. And so then those people can't afford the product. So then the... You know, because now they don't have a job anymore. Yeah, it keeps going. It keeps you going. You understand, de- deflation is one of the worst things that can happen to you. Yes. Just uh, from a year earlier. So looking at July, right? Yeah. July, we saw a 0.3% decrease in uh, co- consumer prices. China doesn't have decrease in prices like that. Yeah. That's not supposed to happen. It's supposed to be 6% growth, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. And on a, ba- on a bad quarter, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're watching prices already coming down over the past year and also 4.4% decrease in uh, in producer prices, mm-hmm. we're already in deflation. Yeah, of course. We're, they're already in the bad part. Yeah. The problem is, is that in a healthy economy, you might have other sectors that can kind of help out, yes. right? In China, the vast majority of people, their investments are not in other sectors. They're in property, yes. which has already seen a collapse. You can remedy deflation by getting people to spend money. Yes. And you can have a certain amount of like federal control really over the economy. Well, right? I think that isn't that why, you know, Biden sent checks to us or whatever during Correct. COVID? Correct. You, you, you can it's inject. like, here, man, go, go buy some stuff. Right. You can right? inject money into an economy to to make sure that this doesn't happen, yeah. right? Which eventually will lead to inflation of some sort, right? Yeah. But deflation with China, they can't inject in any more money because every time they bail out a property company, because people pretty much only want to invest in property, right? Yeah. In China, there's no reliable way to invest your money. Then you're in a situation now where property companies are defaulting. Yeah. They're defaulting on the loans that the government tried to bail them out with. Yes. They're sell. They can't even build the houses that people have already bought and are paying for. By and them. are paying for. They're paying mortgages on houses that will never exist. Yes, it's a massive bubble that has already started to be penetrated by deflation. It's yeah. wicked bad. Yeah, it's for, very, for lack very of better words. Yeah. So, they're looking at people not able to remedy the deflation. We're probably looking at a huge recession coming to China. I think so. A, oh, maybe yeah. even a depression. Oh, yeah, I, I would guess so. Anyway, what are these headlines you got going over here? Many it's wealthy just, people are considering leaving China. What do you mean considering they, they, they already have? For sure, for sure. But the thing is, like, they couldn't during the COVID period. Right. I, was, I collected these headlines over time, mm-hmm. and they're starting to make sense now. Right. Okay. You have UN loses core support as firms leave China. Mm-hmm. These are all economy matters. Got to work that right? core. More millionaires are expected to leave China this year than any other country as the end of COVID zero allows them to finally relocate. People people that have money leave. I they mean, don't stay. Dude, not people that don't have money leave. We've yeah. seen all those like um, refugees in the middle of yeah. wherever, you know, coming yeah. in coming into the states through right. the borders. Now they're just mostly Chinese. Yeah. It's crazy. Foreigners pull more money out of China in May, so it's foreign companies as well. It's mm-hmm. investment firms. They don't want to be in China. Nope. China, the factory of the world, is losing more of its manufacturing and export dominance, latest data shows. Mm-hmm. So not only, uh, I wanted to say something that was very successful, if this was, if this was the goal, okay? Mm-hmm. 
And you can play this stuff while we talk about it. Mm -hmm. The idea was that for foreign investors, foreign companies and stuff, if they diversify their supply chain, if they if they want things to not be locked up in this place that's going to shut down for three years, yeah, think about uh, Xi Jinping's zero COVID policy. Sure, ruined everything, right? Yeah. You're probably as a as a person that let's say I have a factory that makes buttons, right? Yeah. I'm probably going to go, wow, my factory was shut down. I lost all of my profit. My staff couldn't come to work. My staff couldn't come to work. I still had to pay rent. I had to pay, I had to pay, you know, whatever And cost. government taxes and yeah, stuff. Yeah, taxes, all yeah. this kind of stuff. I had to pay operational costs to the mm-hmm. Chinese government just to operate in China. Yeah. Why would I keep my factory there, right? Yeah, exactly. So then you start thinking about diversifying your supply chain. You're like, well, maybe I'm not going to pull completely out of China. Mm-hmm. But what I will do is maybe I'll move uh, uh, one of my factory locations to Vietnam. Yeah. Or India or wherever, right? Yeah. Maybe I'll even pull it back home to the US. Sure. Right. It makes more financial sense to have a more stable environment to produce your stuff. Correct. China's arrogance has created a situation where people have woken up. And if you, I, I, I give you a challenge. If you go out there and you buy a knickknack or a doodad, right? Or a light or an electronic thing, mm-hmm. there's a large chance now you're not going to see made in China anymore because people already have voted. You'll see Thailand, Vietnam. Or Thailand, Vietnam, I see everywhere India. now. Mm-hmm. India. You are now starting to see different countries pop up for manufacturing bases. And that happened way faster. Remember, people were like, that's going to take 15 years to move a supply chain out. It already happened. Yeah, for a lot of things, yeah. For a lot of things. And that actually ended up completely wrecking China's economy mm-hmm. and causing a lot of this deflation, causing a lot of these economic woes is yeah. because people did leave. And again, not to go back to the past, but when we were in China, China's growth largely was re- happened because there was foreign investment into China and that yes. foreign investment's not happening anymore. And it's emblematic of a problem when you see propaganda in overdrive right yes. now. Absolute overdrive right now to say the economy is booming. Yes, we fudged all these numbers. Mm-hmm. Look at how amazing. Uh, P- when you're stooping to the most minute levels and saying, "Look at," there's a lot of people in line to buy something. Yes, and then posting it out there. Look, oh yeah, China's we've got great. an example. Yeah, we've got yeah. an example coming. Then up. you know something mm-hmm. bad is happening. Honestly, whenever you see propaganda out of China and they say one thing, it means the absolute opposite is yes. currently happening. Yeah. Okay. It's kind it of is. hilarious. Uh, would you like to show that example? Yeah, I'll show that example. Let me just fast forward a little bit and I'll get to This is just some footage of uh, us towns. going through ghost towns. And, you know, we, we've seen it. Seen firsthand. it all. We've done it all. Um, and that's why we can talk about this stuff, guys. It's not because we're some kind of armchair critics or whatever you want to call us. We've actually been there. Yep. We've actually done we've it. Lived. We've lived it. Okay. It's um, a disaster. Yeah. It's a disaster. It's been a disaster waiting to blow up for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Especially this housing market. It's ridiculous. Didn't that whole new um, country garden thing go down as well? Yeah, then that was all part of that, right? Another mm-hmm. uh, property company. Because you've heard of Evergrande. Yeah, there's another one. And it doesn't even matter. We don't even, you don't even have to continue saying this. The, the property market in China is collapsing. Yeah. And I'll give you a personal example. A person I know had a 6 million RMB apartment. Yeah. So let's say... That's like a that? million like US dollars. Almost right? a million US dollars, right? Yeah. The UN is weaker now, but yeah. Um, let's just say it's a million US dollars. They just sold it for 500,000 RMB, right? So yeah. that, what is, what is 500,000 RMB nowadays? I have nowadays? no idea, but it's a hell of a lot less than a million US dollars. So they sold a million, do- sorry, they sold a million dollar apartment for $69,000. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Anyway, um, if you ever want to know what's happening the opposite. <laughs> you just <laughs> have to look at flat cap propagandist over here. Works for um, CGTN, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, he says, the view from the ground in China is packed restaurants, full trains, and lines for street vendors. Consumption is way up. <laughs> is it? China's hashtag economy is booming. How can you say <laughs> that? That's because so it's your job. Dumb. That's your job. You know, when they have these knee-jerk responses, you know what's happening is the opposite. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. Lining up for five quiet dumplings. Doesn't mean the economy. Doesn't mean the economy you, you will always have people going to shops. Yeah. They have to. Yeah. You know, they're just not spending on big things. You know, that lining up for that bubble tea is not lining up for a new 
car. Toyota or yeah. something or a yeah. BMW. It's a different kind of a deal. You can go to like any crowded area, any shopping area you want anywhere in the world and say, look, <laughs> look how good the economy is because people are buying things. <laughs> Dustin Pearson says, best research ever. <laughs> I know. This is like, where are your citations, bro? I mean, this is regarded. Source? This fact, is dumb. Yeah, seriously. This China's is like, economy is booming. This is you got to go to a different. You got to go to a different area to study special things. Yes, this yeah. is this is it's not, what it is. Is you uh, not cut out for this, guys? Real economists are putting out the legitimate um, information. Dude, I got some of this information from China's own think economy think tank. Yes, and they're imagine if they're saying some of this stuff. Mm-hmm. You know how bad it yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. Dude. You can never trust propagandists that work for the Chinese government. No, ba- I'll read shit. this. Baker Research. Baker, yeah. Okay, Baker Research, a Tianjin firm. Prices of existing homes in 100 cities across China have fallen an average of 14% from their peak in in August of 2021. Mm. So Baker, a Chinese government think tank, right? Or at Mm -hmm. least has to to operate under them, right? Yes, yeah. Is saying that prices of housing has fallen 14%. If they're saying that, for whatever propaganda purpose that is, yeah. can you imagine the reality? Well, I just told you the reality. 6 million RMB to 500,000. I, I also don't understand. Where does this consumption is way up come <laughs> from? Because there's a kid Dude, buying dumb con- flakes. Consumption is massive when oh, I was Boba in China. Tea, consumption yeah, of street food and yeah, stuff. It's up. Consumption's I, way up. I dude. would say it's way down looking at that because I've been in much crowded, more crowded places in China and I've <laughs> seen much more much more consumption than that jason whatever uh, jason smith yeah this is uh this is incredibly embarrassing yes like stop. even for a propagandist we like we avoid a lot of the shill propaganda stuff because it serves no purpose other yeah. than to like further promote them but this was so epically dumb that we yes. had to we had to put and you again, won. You won, dude. Yeah. If you <clears throat> if you want to see what's wrong in China, dumb. look at this and just do the opposite. <clears throat> this is the dumbest thing I've seen all year. Yeah. Easy. China's economy is booming. Yeah, oh, look at this. Consumption that, that is means way like up. the the mandate's gone out. Listen, guys, yeah. the economy's <laughs> in the toilet. We gotta try to pretend and tell yeah. the rest of the world that it's actually doing very well. Yes. yes. It's like freaking kindergarten <clears throat> level stuff, this. It's crazy. Absolute sp- it's special behavior it's very special yeah yeah i'm glad you got a job jason that's yeah. nice yeah it's good for you anyway um <coughs> guys this is something you're not gonna want to miss okay you know that sea milk over here the reason he's got his name is he used to be a white rapper i did I, i'm still white believe it or not yeah but you, yeah. you're not a rapper mm-hmm. anymore all right i think a white rapper is a, is a specific kind of a group a genre it is you know it's like vanilla definitely, ice definitely. all that kind of crap <laughs> anyway so uh take a quick look at this So, Sea Milk. Hey, what's up? Uh, you know how uh, your nickname is Sea Milk? And <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's because you used to be a rapper. And so, yeah. like, when I met you, I was like, what is this white guy trying to be Vanilla Ice or, you know, <laughs> Eminem or something? He needs, a, he needs a special name. And that's how the whole Sea Milk thing came around. Yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Um, sea milk? Yes. Uh, so... Sea milk stands for condensed milk, by the way, for those of you who yes, don't know. Yes, yes. Now, um, <laughs> I... How to, how to put this? I found footage mm. from a long time ago, like 2011 or something. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? It, we, didn't we film something yeah, about this? Yeah, we did. This? We did, like my origin story. Yeah, yeah. But we did it on ADV China. And we just never released it. Because cause... we didn't have any footage to put yeah. on it. And I found it on an old, old hard drive. And it's like footage of me attempting to shoot some music videos. But I also found all my old songs. So yes. we're like, let's put this together. So it is, it, I mean, I am sweating right now. It's, it's cringe. It's cringe. It's cringe. I, I'm dying. I mean, you got to understand, like, this is my past, right? Yeah. You got to understand. But it's, it is definitely interesting. Yes. It's definitely interesting. So I highly recommend you guys check that out. It's live right now. 
on ADV China. Yep. Um, by the way, which we still have. Yes. This is not the same channel. ADV China is the channel where we ride around on motorcycles and have yes. conversations. It is a separate channel to this one. If you want to go find out about his rapper past, line that up for afterwards. And I found my old SoundCloud, which yes. I linked in that video. Um, so all, all the songs are you know, there. You know, the, there's a thing about um, you rap guys, right? Is you can, what do you call that? Past. So you can like yeah. freestyle? Yeah. Can you do a freestyle? No, freestyle. Can you do a freestyle? No, Come on, do a free, freestyle Absolutely about the not. shills. You can't do a freestyle. <laughs> I'm not shilling. A, I'm not doing freestyles about shills. Okay. Maybe I'll show up on hope. Oh, okay. Maybe yeah. I should. I really want to see freestyle. I remember because like one night we were really <laughs> drunk and there was this other really annoying guy, super annoying foreigner who he just, he's one of those guys who cannot accept that anyone could be better at yeah. anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you're like, oh, I'm running a training center. Well, I'm running a training center too. It's like, oh, I went to this place. Well, I went to a better place than you. One of those guys. Remember? And it's yes. like, at that time, you were still doing rap. Yes. And so it's like, yeah, and I'm doing rap. And he's like, yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I'll rap battle you or whatever. Remember that? Yeah. And you guys had this rap battle. Well, I was, didn't want to do No, it. I know, but it was like the most cringe. I almost, I just wanted to cringe all, all the way out of there, like out of the country. I clearly won. No, you, of course you won. <laughs> that guy sucked. He's so bad. Such a piece of shit. Anyway, um, so you if you guys want to see some of that, because, you know, hey, we've got some very interesting and varied uh, backgrounds. And, you we know, do. That's why we get along well, because we're not yeah. the same. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, that was, uh, what, 13 years ago? Yeah, it was a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. I mean, I started a, a like a basically a, an otaku magazine in South Africa. And so, you know, anime we got stuff, yeah, yeah. anime stuff like a weeb thing. Yeah. So we got we very, did, we, yeah, we're yeah, varied paths. Very, very different. We got very different things. Yeah. Anyway. Um, it's definitely funny. Yeah. So if you want to <clears throat> have a laugh and you want to find out more about that, you just ADV go to China. ADV China. Um, our other channel, which is our motorcycle adventure uh, yeah. talk show on two wheels. Yes. So adventure talk show on two wheels is what we called it. Go okay. check it out. Make sure you open it in a tab right now. Mm. And then later you can watch it after this. I'll actually pin it in the live chat right now in case you're watching live. Yeah. And by the way, props. It's in the description. Props well. for actually letting us release that. Oh, you know, you know it's, it's, it takes a real man. <laughs> I thought about it and I was like, I don't. I mean, there's a reason yeah. I, I no one saw that footage before. Because yeah. when the minute I went home and put it on my computer, I was like, I will never use this. You know. <laughs> but you Ooh, did show it to me in China. Yeah. As a joke. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I was yeah, making yeah. fun of myself. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it's yeah. it's good fun. Please go check it out, yeah. guys. Anyway, let's continue on with the show because now it's time for Wumao Corner. And uh <laughs> well, not that one, this one. Wumao Corner is where we talk about the haters. Man, do we have a, a an interesting one for you today? I think it's super important that everybody knows about this. Um, this popped out like on. Um, it's a long title. Yeah. That Wuma Corner went out for a long time. I know. We got to cut that down. It's a bit too long. Yeah. Uh, you guys, if you're, I don't know, you've been around for the past year or so. Uh, a while back, there was this thing called Code Pink. Yeah, and we pointed it out in an yeah. episode because they were doing like these... It was mad size. These protests on behalf of China. Like, yeah. China's not our enemy. And then they're like hijacking events yeah. and causing... And we we're like, yo, this is ridiculous. Yeah. It was so obviously Chinese propaganda. But it's one of those things that when you went to their website and stuff, it just looks like some sort of weird hippy-dippy... It would like... look like a feminist thing, right? Yeah, yeah, But yeah. it was... I remember we were talking about it because they were part of the whole anti-Asian hate thing. Yeah, yeah. And they were making a big stink and yeah. having like protests in Washington and all this stuff. Yeah. Like, what is It this? was super sus because it was yeah. lining up at the same time when we were seeing... There were campaigns against us, yes. right? Because we were criticizing, along with other Chinese dissidents, criticizing the CCP. Yeah. And they were lumping us us in this thing, saying we're causing Asian And then, hate. remember, we saw this uh, Li Jingjing was interviewing yeah. Code Pink and, and stuff. And then it like, became Whoa. very apparent. Yeah, we're like, what's going on? Chinese right? state media is like interviewing them and yes. stuff. Like, there's something sus. So I opened my New York Times, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. And lo and behold, would it surprise you that it turns out... That there's a bunch of NGOs, right, and think tanks yeah. in the U.S. Mm -hmm. that are funneling Chinese propaganda. And it's this guy, Neville, and this uh, woman, Jody, mm -hmm. funneling Chinese propaganda messages through their organizations. Wouldn't surprise me. And one of them happens to be Code Pink. And remember, all these things started to make sense. I was reading through this, and I'm like, all of this makes so much sense yeah. now. Yeah. It's fantastic. So I linked uh, the article down below. Please go read it, guys. Everybody should know about this because this is sus to the nth degree. Oh, yeah. It's wild. It's, it's basically wild. these non-governmental organizations and they... 
They're basically taking tax credit and using tax, all kinds of it's, all this kind read of nonsense. Through the article, they figured it out. But. Yeah, to to spread Chinese propaganda. It's a very interesting read. Yeah, and of course, as as soon as he pointed out the article to me and I read it, I'm like, yep. Well, we called it. it we makes knew so we knew much there was sense. something sus going on there. It was so sus. Yeah. Anyway, uh, there's a there's just a couple of pictures from this, but yeah, go down below and check out the New York Times article. It's fascinating. Yeah. Um, and also there's uh you know they had all these protests. Remember these? Yeah, ones? I remember that was. And the they whole were thing. participating in all these uh like basically pro CCP events, and we were like, yeah. yo, yo. They're doing massive stuff in South Africa too. Yeah, you know, South I'm South African, well. and it's. Yeah. It's disturbing to see how much Chinese uh, propaganda has really taken hold in South Africa. Yep. It's crazy. Anyway, props to the people. Yeah, this whoever put that together is fantastic. Well yeah, done. they're studying under the Shanghai branch, the propaganda department and everything, and like mm -hmm. learning how to do messaging properly. It's, I mean, so put, to put it to you this way, there is a huge network of organizations on U.S. soil that are currently feeding you Chinese propaganda to make you hate the U.S. Yeah, so, I mean, I can see how it works because yeah. they, they take advantage of the culture wars yeah. and they get embedded in things like feminism or the anti-Asian hate movement. Then they have an avenue. Yeah. And it looks like if you look at a, uh, an organization like Code You're like, Pink, oh, okay, it's that's like, great. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. like, it's, they've got a message. They've got, yeah. it's all about feminism. They're actually just doing Chinese propaganda and they're yep. injecting that into everything they do. So now it's like feminism with Chinese characteristics. Or, yeah, well, because you well, know, it turns out the original goal is just bullshit because it's supposed to be anti-war. Yeah. And then it turns out that they support Russia. <laughs> and it's yeah. like, what, what are you doing? Yeah, that's here, not guys? very anti-war. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So it turns out it's, you know, it's a propaganda front. Yeah. Um, just an example on their website. They uh, this this had to do with the New York Times, so I put it in here. Yeah. They gather two thousand five hundred signatures to you know protest the New York Times by saying they shouldn't talk about how Eileen Gu is um, is skiing for China instead of America because that'll stoke Sinophobia, right? They've Whoa. been doing Chinese propaganda points like nonstop, and now yeah. it all makes sense, especially after we saw them interviewed by Chinese state yeah, media. Yeah, like Li Jingjing. Yeah, come on, it's pretty obvious. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it's a catch up. Definitely worth a read. Oh, yeah. Um, moving on. What's Dude, this? this is Worldview. So I'm going to move on to Worldview. Okay. okay, so Worldview, everything in the world, specifically with regards to China. We've got to talk about this LK99 nonsense, this room temperature semiconductor, superconductor, sorry. Um, oh, yeah, I've been hearing nonstop about that. So apparently there was this breakthrough by a Korean lab, and they it's kind of, people are starting to think it's sus, mm. and they're probably not what they're saying it is. Right. But that's not what we're here to focus on, okay? The LK99 uh, debates up to the scientists out there to figure out whether it's actually real or not. Yes. And if it's viable or not. I'm leaning on the side of it's a bunch of BS. Okay. But I can tell you what is a bunch of BS. I just want to read this comment. The right says, people fell for this so hard, Lamau. <laughs> and they did. Yeah, they did. They did. Um, I would like you to take a look at this one because this is important, okay? Okay. So a Beijing University of Technology something or other student posted this video on... Could have zoomed that in. Don't worry, I did. Okay. I just wanted to show that it was posted on Billy Billy and oh, it was okay. getting millions of views. Apparently of him having like successfully created LK99, okay? And right. showing that it's working. Which is... Bullshit. A superconductor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just want people to understand. Yeah, yeah. It's this be. room temperature superconductor. For those of you who don't know, uh, superconductors need to be uh, cooled down in order to not give any electrical resistance. So if this was true, it would be quite a breakthrough. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, as you can see, very wildly popular video spreading around the Chinese internet. Everyone's like, wow, you know, us Chinese are so awesome. You know, we can figure this out. We're so great. All that CCP usual. CCP one sway. Yeah, all that normal BS that you, you would expect. Um, so this video is obviously being spread everywhere. And then all of a sudden, okay, because this is supposedly showing that it's levitating, that this um, superconductor can... Just... Be, that would be a huge breakthrough. Yeah, of course. Yeah. All of a sudden, oh, no. Well, what's wrong? Where did the video go? The... Oh, it's not there. Yeah. That means so, the video is not there? Yeah, not there. It can't be found. Okay, so the, the video gets taken down, but not before this stuff gets spread all over the West, Okay. For instance, this is one of the many people sharing it on Twitter. Okay. As you can see, it got a half a million views. Yeah. All right? There's a lot of views. Yeah. That's just one, okay? Oh, yeah. This is everywhere. Yeah. So here it is, like a video of hashtag LK99 levitating below a magnet from a University of Science and Technology, Beijing. So, okay, here's the thing. This video 
is now being shown around. I saw it in multiple areas, multiple appearing in multiple instances around the internet as proof of China's technological advancement and superiority. Okay, and it worked. Yeah. You know how many people reached out to me privately? Can, like, I, can I read one, like, yeah. not verbatim? Yeah. But somebody said, I, guys, I'm all for criticizing the CCP, but this is very, very dangerous. Sent a link and then said, if they've made this sort of leap in technology, then the rest of the world is doomed. China will win. Yeah. and That's, that's from, how crazy this is. That's, that's from, like, a person who's not fond of the CCP. No. But it's being used as yeah. a massive propaganda win for China, saying, yeah. you know... You can say what you want, but China's ahead of the game. Look at what they've got. And they're putting this video out there and linking this um, technology, the, the University of Science and Technology, Beijing. Okay. Yeah. So like I said, this is one instance of it being shared. There are many more. I just decided to go with this one in particular. Um, and then the person who's sharing this out says, just to clarify, the video was posted by a student, a verified student from the University of Science and Technology, Beijing. It is not an official video from the lab or the university. Okay. He has since deleted all social media online since people <laughs> found a photo of his student ID on his uh. Weibo account and harassed him. Okay. So here's some screenshots and they've covered up the ID. Yeah. Okay. Good. But this is still this guy's defending the, the person, okay? Right. Because he says, it is believed that a paper will be on ARXIV in a few days, and they are aiming for Nature magazine. So, you know, like they're really trying to push this. And actually, it turns out one of our subscribers here, Hunter's Farmer, said, this looks attached with a <laughs> tiny string, in my humble opinion. <laughs> the person says, if you've seen the better quality original video, it's clearly not a string. I wish I downloaded the original video before it was deleted. Right. Yeah. So this is the guy who was. This is one of the guys who was posting. Still defending this thing. Right. This right. is real. He only got took it down because he was being harassed. Something like that. Right. Right. That's the narrative. Yeah. Anyway, I looked at this guy's profile and it literally says in his bio, "Updating LK99 progress from China." <laughs> Seems a little sus. It was also made in March 2020, which is when we saw a huge amount of accounts pushing propaganda yeah. uh, start to blossom on Twitter. Mm -hmm. The fact that his entire Twitter profile is only to, like, you know, boost LK99 yeah, progress. Like, a little bit on. sus. Hey, maybe give him the benefit of the yeah, doubt. Yeah, yeah, he's a knows? huge LK99 fan. Yeah, maybe he yeah. is. Maybe he's, yeah, whatever. Anyway, turns out that it was fake. The video was fake. Yeah, completely fake. And this is the guy's statement. I sincerely apologize for taking up everyone's valuable time. The sample used in the video I posted yesterday was not LK99, and it does not possess superconductivity. The video title was merely for attention-grabbing purposes, which led to misunderstandings. I deeply regret this and assure <clears throat> everyone that I will learn from this experience and will be more cautious with my words and actions in the future. You know what this is? He's been told to say that. Yep, absolutely. I've seen this so many times. Oh, yes. Every single time something goes viral in China yep. and it turns out that there's a problem, this is the exact response. They don't want the fallout. But, I mean, it's like... They have been told to say this exactly verbatim. It's always this, like, I wanted to attract um, attention. You know what's incredible, though, is that the average person's attention span, this is the way I see things working in China. Yeah. Um, the average person's attention span is so short that they saw the initial thing. People reached out to us. Yeah. You know, rightfully so. They're all alarmed and everything. Yeah. Like, this is what a, what a development. This is insane. This is going to change the world. China's about to win. Right? Yeah. And then after that, I would say, if I had to just throw a random figure out, let's just say 10% of people see a follow-up and see that it's fake. Yeah. So everyone in their mind still thinks, oh, China's ahead of the game. They've got yeah. LK99. It worked. Yeah. Even, you know, whether it was intentional or not, the propaganda. Sure. It worked as propaganda because it was spread so far and wide, and the average person probably isn't going to see the follow-up or even care, to be yeah. honest. They just say, oh, the plant's a seed. China, China's ahead of the game. Yeah. That's all they think. Yeah. So it's fake. Yeah. All right. It's bullshit. Mm -hmm. It's not real. It's not real. Yeah. So there was no LK99 from the Chinese side. We're not talking about the original Korean yes. so-called creator. We don't know what that I is I still yet. think it's BS personally, but you never know. You never I think know. it's not a superconductor. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's pretty well received. Yeah. yeah. I think whatever the case, um, this is what's happened here is this video got far too much attention. And because it's in the international press so much, the LK99 <laughs> thing, it got picked up by international press. Yeah. It got picked up by international people spreading it More around social, social media. media but yeah. yeah. It got spread around so much. No, it got picked up by international press. It did. It did. But definitely social media is where I mean, media is where so I much saw it. so that, in fact, um, 
and I've included an article here. Oh, nice, yeah. Um, this was like a big newspaper of some kind. Okay. <laughs> said, yeah. Beijing Semiconductor, le- uh, semicon- Superconductor, so I keep saying Semiconductor. Beijing Superconductor Levitation Video Author Admits Fraud Takes It Down. Yeah. All right? So it did hit uh, international press, and so yeah. that's why he obviously thought, oh, shit. Yeah. Now I'm going to have to back this up. Or the CCP. Yeah, and up. like, uh, you know, because now he's attached to a university, like yep. a Beijing university. Yep. Now all of a sudden he could get into trouble. That's why yeah. he deleted his social media and deleted everything. Yeah, they made um, him, for sure. Yeah, and they, they made him put out that statement. Yes. Because that is a verbatim statement I've seen many times. Yeah. There, it's funny because it had unintentional purpose of Chinese propaganda, which worked really well. It worked well because I think maybe before you had watched the segment, you probably, if this had crossed your path, you probably in the back of your mind thought, hey, China's really making progress. Yeah, and I saw some people saw some debunk videos from other people. We get that. You're special. But yeah. the average person out there probably isn't going to follow up on it. Yeah. Right? I Why would you? You saw yeah. some curious clip that makes you say, wow, China discovered something and you move on. Right? Yeah, exactly. You're not like, I need to find the, you know. Like. <laughs> exactly. So anyway, guys, uh, that brings us to the end of the main show. And we're going to be moving on now to Yamcha, which, of course, is our questions and answers segment where we answer your super chats. And, uh, you know, we answer your questions and you question our answers. Don't know why I just cat called our own show. Yeah. Well, I don't hey. know why you did that. And you, you didn't even do it with a proper whistle anyway. Oh, you mean this guy? That's yeah, not the real. dad whistle. Yeah, dad whistle is not real. Yeah, it's not real. No. Um, so, are. guys, how this works is we're going to answer now uh, live and on the weekend. Monday, we cut it out of the show, and uh, it's time to relax, loosen the tie. It's Friday after all. Finally, we're actually having a show on Friday again, eh? Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, like two weeks. Yeah. Um, Oof, so, like grab a drink. Hot goat. Grab a beverage, alcoholic or non. Up to you. Mm-hmm. Grab some popcorn whatever and let's get started yes oh and for those of you who aren't sticking around and not watching on the weekend uh stay awesome and you can actually still cut you can still catch the entire q a if you're a patron of yeah, any level that's right if you yeah. go to patron.com slash adv podcast you can see all the q a you can see everything yeah, full show. you get access to the discord, discord. there's yeah. a currently there's a fan art competition right now yeah yeah head over there it's gonna be good anyway uh until then stay awesome and for the rest of you let's get started David Lopan says, our Wing Kong exchange, the time is nigh. He also mm-hmm. gifted memberships. Thank you very much.